Um, what Lofty said? <laughs> it's a name. Your name. My... My name? Lofty said. It's a fine name. Well, it's no Magilu. We're through the channel. Give us a course, Lafayette. Aye, aye, sir. We're headed straight for Lobre. Now this is refreshing, sailing into port like normal people. Well done, boy. The sharks are gonna go hungry tonight. Yes, I'm glad. This won't be a problem, docking the pirate ship here? So, how were the Northern Seas, Aizen? Helavis and Vortigern are in ruins. Trade with Northgand will likely be disrupted for quite some time. Well, I like the sound of that. I'll have to act quickly. Any word of the captain? Aye. It's an old rumor. But they say Captain Eifried was sent to Titania. The island prison overseen by the exorcists, huh? We'll have to look into that. I registered your vessel as one of our merchantmen, same as always. But even so, stay on guard. There's a grand ceremony being held in Logris. Lots of watchful eyes about. I see. So they exchange information for mooring. Information... for mooring? Having the latest news gives merchants a chance to make favorable trades. So it's worth protecting a pirate. I bet Aizen and his crew have connections like this in nearly every port. Not even the Abbey's Iron Decrees can withstand the force known as human greed. I see. Don't bother going to Titania. You won't find Eifried there. And how do you know that? Because I escaped from there. And before I did, I heard something from the prisoners. They said Eifried was the only prisoner to ever get out alive. And that he was taken by an old exorcist named Melchior. Lord Melchior is an elder legate at the Abbey. He should always be present at the headquarters. Don't call him Lord. Von Eifried's our captain. It's starting to look like his disappearance has connections with the highest levels of the Abbey. Their headquarters should be in the capital, right? Yes, at the Royal Villa in Logres. I've never been there, though. And Velvet, your business is with a man in the capital, right? Looks like we're all headed to the same place. I won't apologize for involving you. Usually I'm the one who says that. Hmm. By the way, there's the little matter of your ship. My men brought her through the gate as well. We're going to use her as a scouting vessel. Do what you want. We stole it in the first place. A scouting vessel? I've assigned Benwick to her. He'll give you the details. So basically what that means is that I send it, uh, I send the ship out in an expedition and pretty much uh, I get like different items and whatnot back. Eventually it comes to the point where I can unlock a secret island. To which, uh, I think I already have with him in this. I'd have to double check, but... Aizen told us to come see you. What's all this about a scouting ship? We're going to explore the outer seas. Oh, let me explain. Beyond the reaches of our kingdom lie vast, open oceans we call the outer seas. And you're going to explore them? What for? To make a map of the whole world, of course. A map of the whole world. That's right. Eifried's pirates have many ambitions, one of which is the creation of a complete map describing the whole world. In fact, the Von Eltius already sailed all the way to the far continent for that very reason. That's amazing. You guys sure dream big. I still don't get it. Yeah, me neither. A map of a bunch of places nobody cares about? Big deal. Well, regardless, if we're going to find anything in the vast waters, we'll need a lot of luck. We'd like to borrow some of yours. 
And just how do you plan on doing that? I want you to use your gut instincts to tell us where to look. In exchange, the Von Eltia will be at your service. And you can keep anything we find in our explorations. You'll be able to assign us new orders from any location by using a kind of messenger bird called a Sylph Jay. Who knows? We might even come across some good treasure. Or maybe some rare food. Or brand new recipes. Hmm. That's a lot of treasure you could find. Doesn't sound bad to me. It won't take much of our time, and besides, it could be interesting. You're right. Okay, as long as I'm not responsible for how things turn out, I guess I can help. All right, then I'll tell you what you need to know. Yeah, so basically, I just select any particular location. And it just, it finds it. I just select any particular location and pretty much it goes wherever. After a certain point in time, I might get back some new items, I might not. But, yeah, I've pretty much done everything on here. Scout ship setting sail. Just wait for news. Who knows what will under new ship? Some fish would be my thoughts exactly. And it, it's it, it really doesn't matter. Scouts. Basically, all it amounts to is that I just do that, and at some point, I get items, and then I just set off expedition again, and then I get more items. The more I keep going to the point where it's like I get Norman Island, which is like a secret location that has, uh, I think a secret boss if I recall correctly, but I'd have to do a bit of, I have to do a bit of backtracking for a side quest and whatnot. Sir, scouts have reported seeing a powerful demon. Its danger level has been classified as Code Red. Understood. I'll notify the Abbey we have a Code Red demon in our midst. Send out an emergency alert to the neighboring areas. Right. With wild demons this close to the capital, the Abbey must have had its hands full. Aizen, what did he mean by a Code Red demon? It's like a most wanted list for demons. From the latest I've heard, there's around 10 such demons across the territories. Oh, they sound pretty tough. That would be putting it lightly. Suffice it to say, you wouldn't want to face one unprepared. Then we I best have be tried. prepared. And Let's yeah, get going. It's true. While we're wasting they can time actually here, kill the you. Abbey it's... is digging in. They are crazy strong. New game plus? That's up in the air. Very well! Onward to Logris! You said you heard about Ifrit on the prison island, right? I heard an exorcist legate named Melchior took him away. I don't know anything beyond that. Neither do I. What about you, Mogilu? Word is he was taken away about a year ago. Caused quite a stir if I remember right. Everything about him was kept a tight secret. No one even knew what cell he was in. Eifried is an ordinary human, right? Yeah. He doesn't have the abilities of an exorcist. And he isn't a demon either. Weird. I mean, if they were just trying to bust up his gang, why capture him but leave the crew free? If not his gang, what business does the Abbey have with him then? We've cast our nets wide, and can't come up with any explanation. We'll free him, though. His place is on the sea with us. And you're convinced he's still alive? They wouldn't have any problems killing a pirate who caused them trouble. If the Abbey took him alive and for questioning, it means he has something they really want. But he isn't the type to change his ways, or bend his knee on anyone's orders. He holds his own tiller. Precisely. 
Why did you come back to us? I could tell you all missed me something awful. We didn't. At all. And what about your search for this traitor? He slipped away yet again. I've no clue where he ran off to. You're a witch. Can't you use a spell or something? My spellcraft works kind of like a three-legged race. It simply requires my backstabbing slippery accomplice. Like a con artist needs an accomplice. I am not a con artist! I'm not going to help you find your traitor, you know. How cold! Such an icy stare could freeze fire! And you don't have anyone else? Hmm. Well, no. Do you have a home to return to? Nope. Do you know a trade other than magic? Nope. What is it, Lafayette? Um... Magilu's story made my chest feel funny. And my nose is runny. The witch has no friends, no home, and no purpose. I think what you're feeling is pity. Pity? It's when you feel sorrow for someone else. I... pity Magilu. Oh, come on! <laughs> Wow, those walls, they're so huge. That's Logris, the capital of the Empire. They keep demons out by enclosing the city within a great wall. Humanity has achieved great things on the backs of slave Malakim. Why the surprise, Lafayette? You've been here before, right? I have, but back then, I was not who I am now. I see. Tethered Malakim aren't even allowed the freedom to observe their surroundings. We'll soon lose such freedom ourselves. Huh? We've reached the heart of the Empire, and of the Abbey. Soldiers and exorcists are stationed all around. This is no place for a collection of villains like us. I'm not looking for a place. All I need to find is Artorias. That's it. An this is by far one of the best everyone. moments in the fucking game. Just act natural. Your face is all stiff. I know. Show me your documentation. Uh, um... Well? Your travel permit from the Abbey? Where is it? Girl, how many times have I told you a magician's apprentice must wear a pleasant grin? A magician? Verily, I present to you the traveling troupe of mischievous misfits known across the land as Magilu's Menagerie. Entertainment for the ceremony? You know, on one hand, it Why, is yes, odd to see their DLC are, costumes dear. Please, not fit at all in this apprentice. world. On the other hand, well, allay the good man's fears and show him the Dove trick you've spent all these weeks on. Go to. Huh? Oh, uh, sorry, mistress. I forgot to prepare. You, you, you pathetic little shirker! A proper performer is perpetually prepared. It's fine. Doves flying around would be a nuisance. No, this will not do. If you cannot summon a dove, then act like one. You can tell deep down she's thinking. Cool, cool. I'm gonna fucking kill the switch. <laughs> Remember, Muggy Lou's Menagerie manufactures mirth. That was just a small sample for the good citizenry of Logris. Hey, you can't advertise here. <laughs> Move along. As you say. That was a fine ploy, Mogilu. Well, don't expect tricks like that every day. Coo coo. <laughs> oh, that murderous gaze! Coo -coo. Oh, she's out for blood. Those doves were amazing. Just a crude trick. If anything, it just shows the capital's defenses are pathetic. More like it shows how much confidence they have in those defenses. How many soldiers are here, Lafayette? The number of exorcists in the capital? At least a thousand. And two divisions of guards. I'd expect no less from the capital. They're not careless. They're covered. 
We need transit documents. See how the citizens smile? To think they were fleeing from demons just a few years ago. To hold an observance of this scale shows just how much peace their powers brought. A peace paid for with Luffy's... Velvet? Listen to those cheers. The royals sure have these folks in line. Subjects, may I have your attention. It is I, Percival Asgard, Crown Prince of the Midgand Empire. His Majesty, my father, and I are pleased to celebrate with you on this auspicious day. The ceremony started. It will be impossible to slip in now. After the opening, Ten years ago, our kingdom faced an existential threat, both from demons and the terrible spread of demon light. However, one man raised a miraculous sword and stood so that the body and soul of the land Over there. would not be you lost. You climb up if you want, but attacking now would and be suicide. And the name of that man was Artorius <laughs> Colbrand! Artorius! 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 Trust are unfamiliar with Artorius' noble act. <laughs> to bring us salvation from demons, he sacrificed everything. But he's a murderer. He called Lord Inominat, one of the five Imperians, and blessed us with the strength of the Malachi. But he's a murderer! Velvet! <laughs> he serves as a shining beacon of reason in this world of turmoil. And reason is what binds us. But you killed him. You took everything that I loved. So raise your voices in praise to Artorius' devoted work, to the Savior who purifies evil and guides our flock. Let us call him our shepherd. Shepherd Artorius. Shepherd. Even though the world was filled with suffering, I had to ask something tremendous of you all. I entrusted you to endure the pains of reason. I asked you to bind yourselves with shackles of your own will. For the only blade that can expel calamity is one forged from unshaking reason and the iron will to do what must be done. And now that very blade stands ready before all of us today. I offer my body and my life in service to the people of this great land. With the blessings of the Empyrean Innominat, I will guide you to a world without calamity. And this world's suffering will be nothing but a distant memory. You're the one who murdered. <sighs> Fool, they'll see us. You're the one who killed Luffy said. What? The Shepherd Artorius. That's who you're after? Oh, and here I was hoping you'd just straight up pounce on him. That would be certain death. No, 
I need a sword of reason. To be honest, I would not put it past her. That's the only thing that can kill him. Killing Lord Artorius. Playing it safe? Boring! Regrettably, it is at this juncture we go our separate ways. I've got a bit of hunting to do. No one's stopping you. Goodbye. Farewell! May your days be fruitful and your nights tormented! If our enemy's calling himself a shepherd, he won't be going into hiding. Let's take this slowly. The old man behind him. Melchior, I take it? Yeah. Let's gather information on these people. If we know what they're planning, we can find a weakness. They're the most powerful men in the land. If we're going to look into them, we need a lead first. Aizen, do you have any underworld contacts in the capital itself? Like your friend at the port? I don't go inland much, I'm afraid. But Eifried has close ties to a shadow guild. A tavern in the city, run by an old man called Baskerville, serves as a front for them. A shadow guild? Those sorts of things actually exist. Uh. <laughs> that settles it. Let's head to that tavern. They'll have food, I'm sure. Why not? My stomach made a weird noise. That's another sign that you're alive. The exorcists sure were out in full force to see the Shepherd's inauguration, weren't they? What about that guy you're after? Was he there? What, and have to stand around looking all proper? No, that's not his style. Then I thought he was one of the top exorcists. That wouldn't matter to him. Huh. All right. Actually, Velvet, speaking of the Shepherd, I noticed he wasn't using his right arm. Was he hurt or something? Yeah. He was badly wounded a long time ago. He lost the use of his sword arm. That's what I figured. But don't get the wrong idea. He's still a master swordsman with his left arm. I can tell that from the way he moves. His movements are steady and measured, and his chi is centered below his navel. Huh? Why does that matter? Some people say that all the body's spiritual energy gathers in a place about two finger widths below the navel. Even when he appears to be in a state of total peace, his guard is never down. He's a formidable adversary. <laughs> and I think I know why my target has placed himself at Artorius's side. Because now I want to take Artorius down too. What'll it be? Some food for the boy. Mabo curry is our specialty. It takes a week to stew properly. Mabo curry? Some of that, then. Say, do you know a man named Baskerville? I heard we might find him here. That old man? A scoundrel and criminal who went against the rules of the Abbey. They executed him long ago. Oh. Velvet! This Mabo curry is amazing! You get along so well. Is he your brother? No. No, he wouldn't be, would he? After all, your brother was murdered before your eyes. How do you know that? The shadows watch those who flinch from the light. So the guild is still active, even after Baskerville's arrest? That's right. Just like how Eifried's crew continues their piracy, even without their captain. So you're the contact? What may I help you with? I want to know what Artorius is planning. Information such as that? It won't come cheap. I have here a list of jobs. Not one remotely legal. Take care of all of them. And I'll tell so this you is where I have to do to three particular jobs, not in any particular order. But each of them all, of, all uh, revolve around one particular, one particular theme or one particular um, reasoning. Honestly, I'm gonna go for the missing man one because this one is the longest. <laughs> Take this with you as documentation. It's fake. 
But it's a good fake. It'll hold up to inspection. It's you can do them in any order, it doesn't matter. But, uh... Oh? I just prefer Was to get this one out of the way just because of God how long gate. it is. It's not even difficult, <laughs> I can it's see just... You're a group the, to be reckoned with. It's just the track. Report it's back here once you're long. finished. However, be aware that should you fail... Then this conversation never took place. Got it. I'll cause you no trouble. I appreciate your understanding. You're welcome to stay the night, free of charge. Forget about work until the morning comes. <sighs> right. You're missing Captain Eifried. The captain has done much toward our viability. I promise that I'll share anything I hear about him for no charge. Thanks. All we know is there was a pendulum on the ground at the last place he was seen. And that Legate Melchior is connected to the captain's disappearance. How? We don't know. Sounds like you've got problems of your own. Do you really have time to take on ours as well? I really like this scene, honestly, because... I could ask you uh, why you've tied yourself up with Velvet. It's one of the few things I like about her series. Like, Me? The various conversations... I've got a debt throughout. to repay. Without her, there's no way I'd have ever found my blade again. Grabbing on the for a long a while, A demon so repaying a debt? Really nice to see them have ridiculous. As ridiculous as a pirate Moloch, you think? Hmm. No matter how you look at it, there's nothing reasonable about our rogue existence. And in this brave new world governed by reason, a rogue can either rage and become a monster like me, or... Or band together with others. Like a ship full of pirates, perhaps. Exactly. I admire Velvet's courage, squaring off against the whole world on her own. If you can accomplish that, it takes strength. Real strength. And I'm curious where it comes from. So you're doing it for yourself after all. Is that so wrong? <sighs> no. I'm the same. I need allies on my side. With the strength and courage to combat this so-called order imposed by the Abbey. But anyone who's willing to put up with the creed folly of Eifried's pirates <laughs> has to be an even bigger fool than we are. So I'm like you. I want to know how deep her foolishness goes. She'd kill you if she heard that, you know. It's a compliment. Fools that big aren't born every day. Aha. Uh -huh. And I imagine your dear Captain Eifried's much the same. Aye. That man flies his full flag proudly. I really like this scene. They switch drinks. Like these little moments, the, these character moments that really help flesh out, like, just the whole cast of characters. I really the like Shepherd it. Artorius, hmm? He's got the populace eating from the palm of his hand. I wonder... Hmm... Just how deeply will the fangs of our would-be tragic heroines scar this broken world of ours? I've got a traitor to find, but in the meantime, this should be a good show. I'll say that mission is the last because uh, we do run into him. We do run into her traitor. A scholar missing on the road to Gallus Lake. Strange request. If they know where he vanished, why don't they just look for him there? Exactly. And what's so illegal about a missing persons case that you gotta go to the underworld? I can think of a few possibilities, but our job isn't to ask questions. A kind face for such a hard woman. She knew about me and our cover. 
She's got ears everywhere. And that's not all. She called the papers fake, but they're not. So she's got spies working on the inside, too. I heard that her predecessor, Baskerville, was a monument against authority. To think he was executed. They've lost their leader, but remain unconquered. Not an organization to trifle with. That's how they have to be to take on the Abbey. We'd better succeed on our missions, and not just to get the information we need. Yeah. Besides, I'd like to get another of those drinks, too. You're a man of taste. That place always has the best. Uh, you'd better work hard, too, if you want more Mabo curry. I will. I want to say something about, like, kind of how their characters turn out, but I will wait until later. Because it doesn't really become, like, fully apparent until later on when the story starts going to, uh... Bit of more of a different direction. Greetings, Magilu's Menagerie. You've come to exactly the right place. You must be a Bloodwing. What do you want? You already know about the Code Red demons, right? The really strong demons the Abbey wants gone? Yeah. Would you ever consider hunting them down for us? We'll reward you properly. Reward? Why pay us when the Abbey would do it for free? It's complicated. The Abbey is calculating in their deployments, especially where Code Red demons are concerned. I get it. They'll only act if they determine the demon would cause more harm than the losses they'd incur in battling it. That does seem logical. But sometimes, people have lost a loved one to such a demon. Or sometimes, they have a connection to the person the demon used to be. Basically, Wherever there's the a Code Red demon, the you can bet there are people willing to pay good money to have it killed. <laughs> And let Which me guess, not that that's where the Blood Wings honestly. come in. Exactly. There are Blood Wings all throughout Midgand who have information on these Code Red demons. If you defeat a demon and report back to my comrades, they'll make sure you're well compensated. All right, I understand. But I won't make any promises. That's fine. No sense in drawing up a contract when the hunter probably won't survive anyway. If you get results, let us know. We'll hold up our end. That being said, I'd feel guilty if I didn't help out at least a little, so... Here, take this. Those Blood Wings are definitely a rough crowd. To be fair, things are never that straightforward when you're dealing with demons. All that matters is that there's something in it for us if we hunt those Code Red demons. The only thing better than fighting formidable foes is getting paid for it. Just remember that these Code Red demons are tough enough to make the Abbey shiver. We'd be wise not to underestimate them. We should talk to those blood wings before considering any of the marks. They might have information that will help us prepare. Yeah, and we better remember to upgrade our equipment. Right. Hey, Laffy said. What is it, Rokuro? Mabo curry. Huh? <laughs> oh. <laughs> You're an interesting one. You like Mabo curry that much, huh? It I really love good. these, like, these little sides of And it's gets, creamy honestly. and kind of spicy. Eating it made me feel nice. I'd say you love it then. Do all Malakim have such an appetite? Each has their own tastes. Some eat a lot, some eat a little. Just like humans or demons. What do you like, Aizen? Drinks, I suppose. What else? Uh, pretty much just drinks. <laughs> Don't you like anything else? Is it a problem if I don't? No. I'm just wondering. For me, it's drinks and candied sweet potatoes. That's where you boil strips of sweet potato in oil and then coat them in sugar, right? Yeah, I never get tired of them. So you like to drink, but you've also got a sweet tooth? Yeah. Is that so strange? No. Candied sweet potatoes? Sounds good. Uh, There's nothing to be ashamed of. It's just a sign that you're alive, remember? Right. I really like uh, these little character interactions every now and then. Like, sometimes they don't really amount to much, but, you know, other times they do give more insight into, like, the world and our characters and so forth. But then there's, like, the little ones every now and then. They don't really give more insight to the world or exhibition or world building and so on and so forth, but they're just they're just kind of nice to listen to. Hey, 
That noisy demon looks pretty strong. Think it might be one of those code red demons? Doesn't matter to me. I'd rather not waste my time fighting it if I don't need to. I don't see it as a waste of time. Look, the Abbey only has a handful of exorcists strong enough to take something like this down, right? Probably. I'd say Praetors like Lady Teresa and the Legates could probably take it on. And those guys are all your enemies, right? I see where you're going with this. The Abbey is strong, both in its individual members and as an organization. And if we're to close the gap between us and them, we need to fight strong opponents like this demon. That's what I would do. But you're free to make your own decision. All right. I'll concede the point. But we should determine just how strong it is first. I don't want us to bite off more than we can chew. That goes without saying. I'd rather not get myself killed due to inadequate preparation. You don't have to worry that much. If you want to go fight, I'll help keep you safe myself. I promise. I don't recall asking for your protection. You don't need to. It's something to do other than just like continuing on with the story and plus... You know, it's a game. I might as well just... Play it. A forward Watch yourself. This guy means business. I know, I No mercy! Wounds that will be Another victory. Whew. That thing was pretty strong. No, it wasn't. You just wanted something good to train on. I'm not in it just for myself. If I get stronger, I'll be more helpful in your battles. This counts towards the repayment of my debt. But you don't deny at least part of it was for yourself. Of course not. Every true swordsman wants to train so they can improve themselves. It might be a little late to ask, but what debt exactly are you repaying, Rokuro? My sword is my life. When I was separated from it, Velvet told me where to find it. Also, she broke me free from a 500-year-long prison sentence. <laughs> you say that like it's an afterthought. And that's why I can't fully trust you. I don't follow. Us Rangetsu men are renowned for our sense of duty and commitment. Actually, now that you mention it, Rangetsu's a pretty unusual last name. I heard your family specializes in unconventional swords and fighting styles. That's true. Our ancestor was a swordsman from way off in another country who came to this land a long time ago. So I'm pretty a foreign sure swordsman, that... huh? I guess that explains this... why your swords and techniques this stand out so much. Skit is actually he had quite a what, hard time uh, getting by in this unusual land until he was taken in by an aristocratic uh, family. Ever since, the Rangetsu story. clan has accepted the rule of their benefactors and has served them in repayment of their debt. Served them as bodyguards? Bodyguards, assassins, spies, body doubles. Whatever the order, your family will carry it through. Always return that which you've borrowed, even if you must repay it with your life. That was our ancestors' creed. In truth, four of my five older brothers are dead. You have to admit, we take our sense of duty seriously. Yeah. All right, I get it. You and your family are all tied to your sense of honor. That seems to be the case. We can count on him. As long as he's on our side, at least. Oh, come on, that's not fair. <laughs> but yeah, I'm pretty sure that was more or less kind of the kickstart to Red Rose's story, story arc. Like, every character uh, you can play as has their own, like, side, side quests that relate to them as characters. If you complete them, you get a... You get a power swap version of their costumes. Sometimes you get, like, alternate versions of the costumes, which is, uh, what I got going on for Aizen before. Honestly, I could do them in this, uh, gameplay if people really want me to. I'm not gonna really go that far yet, but I can. I don't know. I'll probably beat the game first, and then, depending on if people actually want me to play through this story quest, I'll do it. Okay, so it doesn't really sh do a good job of showing it, but this is going to be a long trek.
Thankfully, due to the increase in my level, I really don't need to fight any of these. Any of monsters. So it'll be pretty short for me. There's an Arco Red Demon. I could just fight that in it. Get out of my way. That's the problem, is I'm pretty overleveled for the game. So defeating Cobra Demons and whatnot is not really gonna have much of a I'm not really gonna have much of a challenge with that. I think it's really only the story uh, fights and whatnot that actually give me quite a bit of experience. You know, I did say it was gonna be a bit of a trek, but I guess that's mainly because I Last time I did this, I was mainly just going back and forth, goes there? trying to what grind. What on earth are guards doing here? But I don't need to do that with this. Watch out! They've got molecules. They're no ordinary soldiers. Ah! tall, but I'm just close. I will miss. Form zero. One down. <laughs> Sheesh, what do you suppose they were guarding? A little lost lamb, perhaps. You think they're holding Mendy captive? Is there someone here named Mendy? We've come to help. Oh, thank goodness. I can finally go home. So they were keeping you prisoner. They made you mine vermilion ore? Yes, I discovered a method of refining it, and it cost me dearly. What's vermilion ore? A rare stone made of concentrated nutrients. It can be used in medicine, but it's also poisonous. Correct. So you were making medicine? Yes. They were forcing me to make a nutritional substance called nectar. Isn't vermilion ore supposed to be highly addictive? Uh, I told them that, but what choice did I have? Whatever. Our task is complete. Can you get back to Logris on your own? I can. I'm terribly sorry. Why apologize to me? We've done what we came for. Let's get back to the old lady. Okay. Oh, we can just go back. Well, we've learned one thing coming to the capital. The Abbey and Shepherd Artorius have expanded their power immensely. They might as well be the Empire now. They have the undying support of the populace. The Shepherd, savior of humanity. <laughs> I wonder what he meant by the blessings of the Empyrean Enominat. That's what they call the gods they worship in church, right? The Empyreans? He promised a lot in that speech. But can he really command such a power? I have no idea. Not even we Malachim know of them beyond the stories and legends. He called Enominat the fifth Empyrean. There should only be four, one ruling each element. Is he talking about a new Empyrean? Have you heard anything Luffy said? Sorry, I don't know anything about this. It doesn't matter. We should be careful about taking his words at face value. The man is no saint. He'll stop at nothing to achieve his aims. But there's no way he could have a god at his beck and call. Don't underestimate the Abbey. Trust me, I'm not. That's why I'm using the Shadow Guild to help us hunt them down. And to make sure that I kill him. 
regards to that mission earlier, yeah, if you're doing this like on a new game, just flat out a new game, that is by far the longest mission. Because it's such a grind fest. There we go. I hear Mendy made it back safe. That takes care of that problem. If I recall correctly, I think this is what I want to do next. Keep up the good work. So, somebody needs to ambush the Royal Medical Society on the Danan Highway. The Royal Medical Society is a group of doctors that travel around healing the sick. They're funded by donations given by ordinary folk. Hmm. Why would anyone attack them? Don't ask me. Some people are just twisted. And why would an underworld group defend them? Who knows? Something to do with the attackers, perhaps? So the attackers were demons. I guess that's why they needed us to stop the attack. The doctors? Looks like they ran off. It appears they were after this stuff. Medicine with the cathedral seal. That scarf, did that belong to the attackers? Yeah. All three were wearing them. Does it mean something? They were just demons. Aggressive ones who attacked the innocent. The job is done. Time to leave. By the way, those folks we just passed were talking about us. What were they saying? They were warning each other to be careful talking about the demons that burned down Helavis and destroyed the Seagate Fortress being near the capital. Considering how bold we've been, everyone's still fairly calm about it. We'll be famous soon enough once we kill the world's savior. Sounds like that could get fun. Fun? Why? The people trying to capture us will put prices on our heads and put up wanted posters everywhere. Depending on who draws the likenesses, each portrait can look completely different. You know what I'm talking about, right, Eisen? Aye. I've seen dozens of pictures of myself. Immediately? Some make me a monster. I'm just having flashbacks Others make of me a piece. handsome youth. It's fascinating, really. I hope I get a poster soon. Then do your best to really stir things up. Right. I'll stir everything up good. <sighs> You're good at what you do. I'm impressed. There's still more to do. I'm sure it'll be easy for you. All right, after this, pretty much we get down to the root of this. Destroying red crates in a warehouse? Doesn't sound very nice. Have we ever been nice? <laughs> I suppose not. This is a contract job, so let's keep costs down. I'll call the Von Eltia and have her draw the guards away. If you would. What will we be destroying? Who knows? That's hardly our concern. All right, the guards are gone. Let's move in. Benwick and the crew did a fine job. Red crates. These must be our targets. The seal of Midgand Cathedral? Should we look inside? There's no need. Burn them, Lafayette. Okay. We're done here. Let's go.
That storm cost too much time. I must report to Lord Artorias as soon as possible. <gasps> it's you! Oh, hey. The crybaby. Eleanor Hume! Exorcist Prater! You won't get away this time! Bring her! You really want to fight, don't you? Willing to fight without your Malachim? No! You set the storehouse ablaze?! The people have worked so hard to withstand this time of crisis. How can you destroy what they have so painstakingly built?! Because I'm not human. You'll pay for this, you demon! More Malachim up her sleeves? Protect you, Madam Eleanor! Come and face me now, <laughs> demon! He's adorable! <laughs> 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 Ooh, I found you at last! Oh yeah, that it's all coming together. Voice. The Enfu, you traitor! You'll never leave my clutches again! <laughs> Is that smoke? It is! Fire! The fire has spread enough. Let's get going. You're coming with us. Let me go! Witch nippers! Madam Exorcist! What happened? Oh, you're badly hurt. I can wait. Gather the people and put out that fire. Yes, madam. Tell me, do you know what was being kept in that warehouse? Um, mostly nectar, I believe. Vast stores of the medicine, provided by High Priest Gideon, to be distributed to doctors across the land. Medicine given by the church? Why would anybody destroy it? I'm pretty sure chronologically the order I did them in is the best one possible. You can do them in any order, but the, uh... The details kind of get a little mixed matched if you don't Whew. do them in a particular Looks order. like we're in the clear. <laughs> Misfortune and anguish! I have that little <laughs> turncoat right in front of me! <laughs> well, at least now I know where to find him! That weird little Moloch was the one you were looking for? The very same! The Moloch Bienfu! A creature of unfathomable wickedness and beguiling cuteness who broke the heart of this wretched maiden! <laughs> Once I finally catch him, who knows what I'll be capable of? Not sure I get it. Me neither. Good. Pray that you never do. We've finished all the jobs. Let's get back to the old lady's tavern. <laughs> You sure do like that Mabo curry. Uh, do I? Don't ask me. You didn't think it was tasty, Velvet? Couldn't tell you. Huh? Food doesn't hold any flavor for her. According to Velvet, she can never feel sated. And the only thing she can taste is blood. Oh, I see. Uh. What's the matter? You're gloomier than usual. Am I actually useful? Yes. Huh? You can cut down any enemy, and Aizen can beat them up. Velvet is strong and can eat anything. Hmm? Huh? But I'm not good at fighting, and apparently I'm always gloomy. Is that what's bothering you? In a fight, offense alone isn't everything. Hurting your foes means nothing if you don't live to tell the tale afterwards. 
Your healing arts are what let us always fight at our best. He's right. Compared to dead weight like Mogilu, you're plenty helpful out there. Only compared to Mogilu? I didn't mean it like that. I was just saying she never helped at all. <sighs> you're not going to grow overnight. Be patient. Huh? You've only just been set free. That you've even managed to keep up with us this far is a feat in and of itself. It's true. Strength comes by continually improving your mind and body. Keep your spirits up and keep working at it. And you'll get there before you know it. I will? The drive to improve is what's important. Right. What's the deal with you and that exorcist, Eleanor? She had tears in her eyes when we first saw her at Northgand. Velvet poked fun at her, calling her the crybaby exorcist. Why would an exorcist cry? Sacrificing the individual for the good of the many is part of Artorius's philosophy. She seemed troubled by that. She's naive. That she can still carry on shows just how strong she is. It looks like they don't hand out the rank of Praetor to just anyone. Hmm? Just stay sharp around her. That's all. By the way, is that Bienfu character that Magilu was after really a Moloch? He may look strange, but yes. He's still a Moloch. That means Magilu is an exorcist. Why does she call herself a witch then? If she got locked up in that prison, she must have been kicked out of the Abbey. Or she could be a fraud. Yeah. Even if she wasn't an exorcist, she could still perform some tricks with a Moloch like that. I will protect you, Madame Eleanor! Face me now, demon! <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> Was that laughter? Uh, I'm sorry. Why apologize? Bienfu is funny, right? Right. Then if you want to laugh, laugh! <laughs> I definitely think these actors and actresses had fun on the set. If you think that's funny, you should give it a try for yourself. Say, Hi, I'm Luffy Set! Uh, alright. Hi, I'm Luffy Set! Knock it off! Huh? What's the problem? People are staring. Don't attract attention. I'm sorry. <sighs> She's so uptight. Let's try it together later, Luffy said. Uh, all right. Welcome back. That must have been hard work. How does marble curry sound to you? I also have our specialty peach pie on hand. We had a deal. Spill it. <laughs> Shepherd Artorius has gone north, up the Danan Highway, at the Abbey's newest temple, the Empyrean's Throne. He is expected to be there for a while. Are they relocating there? In a sense, yes. They're holding a ritual to move the seat of the Empyrean Innominat. Innominat. In other words, the Abbey's new god. It is a very serious affair, so I imagine Melchior will be there along with the other High Exorcists. Suits us fine. I might even find him there. That will do. Somewhere in there we'll find a chance to strike. Perhaps. But be aware that security near the throne is on high alert. We'll manage to get through. No, you won't. You may be able to fool the guards, but there's no tricking the barrier they've put up. They've used arts to erect a giant wall, keeping outsiders away. But they have to get through themselves. That implies some sort of key, right? Yes. In fact, one of our people is looking into that as we speak. However, I'm afraid... <laughs> It'll cost us. You learn quickly. And here's the bill. Assassinate High Priest Gideon of Midgang Cathedral. Okay, now we're really not being nice. Consider it done. Aren't you going to ask why you have to kill a High Priest? I imagine it's because he's the one controlling the nectar supply. The church is the sole producer and distributor of a highly addictive substance. They rake in huge profits, while the common man, along with your people, suffer for it. Does that cover it? 
You noticed your tasks were related. That was the real test, wasn't it? And you passed. No matter how skilled you are, you have to know more than how to swing a sword to earn my trust. Don't misunderstand my intentions. I'm willing to do anything, if it brings me to Artorias. I ditched my scabbard long ago. I see. So you are the embodiment of a bare blade. A more formal introduction is in order. I am Tabitha Baskerville, leader of the Bloodwing Butterflies. I'm Velvet. Tell me about the High Priest. Each evening, he prays for protection from calamity at the royal villa on the Castle Logris grounds. Tradition holds that the High Priest should be alone for the prayer. That would seem the best time to strike. How do we get into the villa? Carry this insignia with you, and allies of the Bloodwings will offer you their aid. We'll hold up our end. Just find out about that key. Ah, <sighs> uh, Velvet? Are you okay? It's nothing. But you seem... I said it's nothing! Uh... Sneaking into the castle will be an all-night job. Let's take this time to get everything ready and then rest at the tavern. Yeah. If nectar made from vermilion ore is so bad for your health that it was banned, why are they making it? They make it because it was banned. Huh? Just because the powers that be say a rule is for the greater good, it doesn't mean that everyone will see eye to eye with them. If Tabitha's Mabo curry was outlawed, would you really be able to never eat it again? I wouldn't like it, but if it's against the rules... Uh... <laughs> well, you'll get hungry no matter what. People want what they want. But anything forbidden is bound to be rare. And when things are rare, they become expensive. So that's why people make it. The world isn't a simple place. There's an underside to everything. Not everything an is underside? Contract killers, secret weapons dealers, loan sharks that charge outrageous interest, pirates like me, the folks who offered us mooring for information, and the gilded Helavis are all part of it. As are the people who dye chicks blue to sell them at a higher price. And the people who bet on alleyway bug fights. <gasps> and they'll come to you with a smile, so you can't let your guard down if you want to stay safe. What sorts of bugs do they make fight? That's the part that got your attention. <laughs> we know for a fact that Captain Eifried was on the prison island for a period of time. And it's true that Melchior took him away. However, I'm afraid that is where the trail grows cold. In any case, we can be sure that the Abbey has him captive. But what could they possibly want with him? If their aim is merely to fight piracy, they'd publicly execute him, or try to lure you out, would they not? And yet they've done neither. Total silence. I wonder... Could it be they want to get their hands on the relics some say Eifried brought back from the far continent? The relic from across the sea? Have rumors of that strange thing been going around? It's possible. There was a certain relic that the captain was curiously taken with. Kept it safe. What was it? That's our business. I'll speak no more of it. But if that's truly what they're after, I highly doubt the villa is where they're keeping him locked up. That's not where they keep their torture implements. Quite true. At any rate, I thank you for sharing what secrets you could. I wish you the best of luck on your search for more information.
More. More. More! I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. But I'm hungry. I'm so hungry. If survival is at stake, an elder sister eating her brother before he inexorably wastes away is not outside the bounds of reason. You needn't hold back, Velvet. Eat, Lafayette. No! No! The hell with you! You and your disgusting words! <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Why? You were... You were shouting. Be more careful around me! You know full well I'm a demon! I'm sorry. <laughs> Damn. Awake or asleep, it's all one long nightmare. Smashing objects together is destruction. Smashing feelings together is life. But objects, tools, so much easier to abuse and toss aside. What does that mean? It means break time is over. Time to get to work, sweetie. Good thing I showed up in time. Don't tell me you're coming too. Sojourn alongside the gloomy demon lady, and the exorcist controlling Bienfu is sure to appear. I told my own fortune, and there it was. Do your fortunes actually hold water? I've been in the castle before, you know. How useful to have Magilu along, they said in the future. Get in my way, and I'll give you the boot. It's the Viper's Nest. They're always watching. Yes, but therein lie shadows, too. Let's look for someone with a red scarf. Let's see your papers. Checks out. This tunnel over here connects to the castle. It should put you inside the villa. Croc's favorite meal is witches. <laughs> All right, onward and inward. Everyone but Mogilu, tread carefully. Some assassin's crew we are. The Bloodwings are a serious organization. I'm impressed that they know about this entrance. And they have agents on the inside to facilitate this little operation, too. They must have branches working all over the Empire. They've probably even figured out how to get cats and dogs working for them. Here's a juicy morsel about them. They make sure even their corpses go to good use. They what? Long ago, <coughs> one of their agents stole into the castle. When the guards discovered him, they chased him to this very passage. He dove into the water to escape, and then... Crunch! Ah! A crocodile devoured him in one massive bite! All that remained was his arm, bobbing to the surface. From this, two important facts were learned. What were they? First, they learned of the existence of this passage. Second, they could serve crocodile meat in town. Crocodile meat rubbed with human blood becomes tender and succulent, perfect for Mavo curry. Then I ate? If it's so tasty, I'll have to try it. Rubbed with the blood of a lying witch. That would hit the spot, I think. And it wouldn't even affect our combat strength. Hey, the kid's a wreck. It was just a joke to help calm him down. It was a joke? 
Yeah, I totally made up that part about the crocodile. Mabo curry is actually made from man-eating catfish who... <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep moving. Right. I'll get you for this, witch killers! <laughs> Alright, so this is going to be a bit of a lot. Hey, look! The water level dropped! You don't think there are any alligators down there, do you? We need to get through here while it's still nighttime. The perfect place for prognostication. Eeny, teeny, spiny crow. Which way, which way shall we go? Mogilu. The icy glare of death. Boy, which way do you think is best? I. Uh. There must be a way up somewhere. Let's find it. Uh. Why so glum, Velvet? The thought of killing a man weighing heavy even on your own damaged conscience? Not especially, but I wonder how you remain so flippant about it. Hey, I'm not here to murder anyone. I'm just tagging along in search of my traitor. <clears throat> Do we have to kill him? Can't we just make him stop this nectar business? I don't think he'd listen to us. Huh? Word in the taverns is that this high priest is a real shady character. The Abbey and the religion are popular now. But three years ago, no one had heard of them. High Priest Gideon was the one who led the church through those dark days. But once Malachim became visible to the general public, and they learned how effective Malach arts were against demons, that all changed. Humans are such fools, only believing what they can see with their own eyes. And once the church had attained popular support, a nasty power struggle swept through the ranks. Many vied for the mantle of High Priest, charlatans, power-hungry converts, but they all faded away. They left the church? No, they all met their maker. Some from disease, others from accidents. And in the end, Gideon became high priest. Uh, he may be the head of the church, but the people clamor for Shepherd Artorius. That's got a sting. Either way, if we're to face him, he might have some tricks up his sleeve. We'll need to keep our eyes open. It doesn't matter who he is. We just do our job. A library? This is unexpected. Wow! Oh, oh, oh! Well, isn't this a rare collection of tomes? You royals sure have coffers to burn. Oh! Books in the ancient tongue! Can you read it? Well, no, but... I just... This has nothing to do with our job. Gee, I wonder if that book's huh? important. If you want it, just take it. Don't pretend to be noble. You're consorting with demons. Good grief, Velvet. You can't lighten up for once in your life. Lighten up? Did you forget we're here to kill someone? You really want that ratty old thing? There's gotta be way pricier ones. So, Mogulu, which way to the worship hall? Hmm, which way indeed? I asked you a question. I told you I've been here before, but I never said I was an expert. And I said we'd dump you if you started to annoy me. Dump me? Then you'll need to look for a trash can first. <sighs> I'm the fool for even trying to hold a conversation with you. <laughs> That's the spirit. Loosen up those shoulders, and the way forward ought to make itself plain. <laughs> Feeling nervous, Lafayette? A bit. I can teach you a spell that will help. Like that eeny teeny spiny crow thing? <coughs> no, that was divination to draw back the veil of fate. This spell is a bit of magic that will improve your fortune. Here is what you must chant. Magic Kazam! <laughs> See? It totally works! 
I'm not sure. What did this spell do? It's a pointless charm to dispel a pointless worry. If it's pointless, why even perform it? Because humans are creatures that find themselves burdened unknowingly by pointless things. In any case, chant after me. Are you ready? Uh, all right. Magikazam! Magikazam. I can't hear you! Try again! Magikazam! Magikazam. Once again, with feeling! Magikazamazam! Magikazamazam! Again! Magikazamazam! <laughs> Is that all you've got? Magikazamazam-zam! Shh, keep it down. We're trying to sneak in, remember? <laughs> what? <You> asshole. <laughs> Just an old gag. Shut up. <laughs> oh, what was that for? I was only easing the boy's nerves. We have more important things to worry about. Hm. Demons and Malakim are such stiffs. Magikazam. Huh? Did that help? <laughs> and now the boy consoles me. Well, that was pointless. Are you Gideon? I am in prayer at the moment. Who are you? I asked you first. Such ill manners. But what else could I expect of a demon? <laughs> Stop right there! <gasps> Another accurate augury. An ambush. Is this more of your Reaper's curse? Or do you think the old lady sold us out? You figured it out, didn't you? That he's running the Nectar operation. Indeed. I followed up on each of the incidents you caused, and the trail led me all the way to the High Priest Gideon. Yet you still defend him? The punishment he deserves is for the Abbey to administer. Punishment? How dare you! Do you realize how much I've done for the good of the Abbey? Make her nice and desperate, Velvet. I just know the result will be something wonderful. <laughs> Stay out of this, witch. Stand aside. I'll take care of this right here, right now. I cannot. The laws of the Abbey are clear. <laughs> Reinforcements. They have the advantage at range. Crush her head. Run from your true mistress! <laughs> the fucking face! I'm putting you back where you belong! You, descendant of the Seventh Grove, see our vows renewed! May our prayers of discontent vanish infinitesimal into the void! Remember this true name I bestow unto you! Fushi Cass! Yeah! <laughs> oh, now it is on! Now she's no longer dead way! Are you an exorcist? Wrong. I am a witch for whom the universe is a plaything, 
and the souls of men but moats. Oh, but if it's a name you need, call me Miss Mogilu. A human consorting with demons? Have you no shame, girl? You owe us, Mogilu. Then pay us back right here. Always invest responsibly, children. Stand aside. Wait! All I did, I did for the sake of the Abbey. We needed money to build the temple. That's why I sold the nectar. I know I was wrong to produce so much of it, but, but I was only trying to help the people as best I could. Let's talk this over. Who ordered you here? Was it the sick? Was it the doctors? Or... No. Was it Artorius? I knew it! Damn his eyes! So he wants to wipe me out of existence, does he? That bastard! After all the work I did for him! No! Velvet! That false savior will pay! You can't die now! You think you could read books when you're dead? Uh, don't you die either, Velvet! Priestie's getting away. He won't. I'll hunt him down. So, not even the High Priest is immune to demon blight. I guess he hit his limit. <laughs> what was that? What... what is that? The demon... returned to human form? And... what is that beast? There's a barrier here. So what? The Abbey is holding this thing captive? This barrier... I know it well. It seems our errand has met with success. At least technically speaking. 
Right. Let's get out of here. What did you do to the High Priest? What is this demon? I don't know, and I don't care. Do not mock me! You are the mockery. What do you hope to do to me without your exorcist powers? That was some night, though. Stay sharp. Dawn hasn't come yet. Stealing a Moloch from an exorcist. How did you pull that one off, Mogilu? The info was my Moloch to begin with. Then he betrayed me and ran away from his rightful home. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Mogilu treats Malakim so bad, bad, bad. I couldn't take it anymore. <laughs> After a little while, I ran into Madame Eleanor. She was so much nicer to me. I see, I see. <laughs> now, just how am I going to punish you for that little slander on my character? <laughs> the bad, bad days are here again. <laughs> You're an exorcist, then. Eh, I'm a witch, silly. Bienfu here is the catalyst thingy for my magic. But only exorcists can form a pact with Malakim. <laughs> oh yeah? Says who? Someone who likes making dumb rules? <coughs> <laughs> Enough, Velvet. Questioning her is a good way to go mad. Hey, just like someone else I know! I know she's watching this right now. You did the job well, it seems. You heard quickly. That's about all I'm good for. And with these old ears, sometimes it's hard to hear it all. And did you learn anything about the key for passing through the barrier? Yes. Only the high-ranking exorcists can enter through the barrier protecting Artorius and his temple. Exorcists are considered high-ranking if they are accompanied by at least four greater Malakim. Hmm. So if we had four powerful Malakim with us, we could slip through. But Malakim outside the Abbey's control are rare. They thought this through. Hmm. Well, I may not look it, but I'm a greater Malak. Aizen, Lafiset, and Bienfu. So we just need one more. We'll have to steal it then. So I have to come too? Sounds like a pain. Then stay. We don't need you. We'll keep Bienfu, though. You have no courtesy. How about, it would be an honor, Madame Mogilu? More like that. Would you come if we asked? To attack the Shepherd? <laughs> Depends on how you ask. A battle between Shepherd and Demon sounds like a real fine spectacle. I'm afraid this is just how Miss Mogilu is. Miss Mogilu, um, I, I would like it if, if you came with us, Pl please. Luffy said. Well, what choice does that leave me? I suppose I could tag along a little while longer. You can count on me. Melchior will be there. You and I still share the same goal. Our business is done. You can have this back. Keep it, dear. As long as you have that, we will count you as an ally worthy of aid. Allies of the ones trying to kill the savior? You might regret that. <laughs> Such a considerate young lady. Listen, dear, all of us live on the fringes of their so-called reason, do we not? Don't say I didn't warn you. Velvet, wait. My, 
am I? I can't blame him. It's been a long night. Some aid for your allies? Of course. Right away. You're finally up. I'm sorry. Don't worry about it. Getting sleepy or hungry is a natural part of life. I won't eat you. What about your wounds? Feeling pain? That's also natural, right? I'm fine. It was nothing. You're really tough, aren't you, Velvet? You have to be tough, if what you seek is revenge. Revenge? We're leaving. <laughs>